but we're going to also keep the focus on the school districts because we had South Washington County School District 833 with an issue. Now we're going to move next door to the Stillwater School District, District number 834, as they are uh, attempting to try to close Marine Elementary, Withrow Elementary, and Oak Park Elementary. And with us today we have Lindsay Nelson, Erica Shano, and Bill Wright, three parents who uh, are fighting those initiatives. And I want to say to all of you, welcome to North Star Oasis. We are so glad to have you today. Thank Thanks you for having us here. So can uh, one of you please give me a rundown as to what's happening? I've been busy, <laughs> and as our viewers know, I'm also in a, uh, in a graduate program right now. And let me briefly mention that I started a class. I just got out of business law. And now we're moving on to operations, and class was on Thursday night. My textbooks arrived on Friday. I'm behind the curve. I've been reading all week, <laughs> so I have not had a chance to really prepare for this discussion as I normally would. So I need you to educate me at the same sure. time you're educating our viewers as to what's going on with District 834. Okay. So December 17th, the Superintendent Potrelli, she proposed the BOLD proposal, and that includes the closures of Withrow Marine and Oak Park Elementary School. This will roughly displace about 800 students into three fewer schools. There are a lot of negative student impact and community impact with that. So we've got a group of about 1,600 parents that are strongly opposed to BOLD and are okay. working to stop it. So you're opposed to the school closures? Yes. Okay. Uh, and it's not just the school closures we're opposed to. We're, I think, opposed to the overall process that's been deployed by the school district in terms of um, how this process has been implemented, the lack of transparency that the plan, the current plan on the table even has, and basically, uh, you know, the benefits that are being communicated, whether those are real or not, and ultimately just the direction that the district is trying to go with this thing. Okay. Now, I know you did give me a PowerPoint presentation at the, you know, before we started. I got a chance to load it in the computer. <laughs> I have not had time to look at it. Uh, but you have a video here. Uh, it's a, about a 20-second clip. Dallas, if we can get this on the screen. And this is Dennis Bloom, the Director of Operations, speaking. And so let me try to figure out what I'm going to look for. That's what I'm looking for. And let's see if we can get the audio here for what Dennis Bloom, Director of Operations, has to say. And I want to be really clear on this one as you look at repurposing. Our committee has never recommended or we never really even discussed the closure of a school. We're, we're not looking to close a school. We're looking to move our least uh, facilities and move them into schools, maybe repurpose and get our central services in, in those schools, but not close any schools. So, is he telling us the truth? What's going on? That was uh, uh, November 13th of, uh, of 2014. That was a year ago. So now what's happening? Well, now what's happening is they've decided that it makes sense to, as part of closing central services um, and getting rid of other buildings, they now want to close schools as well. Um, and as part of that, um, I, I'm a parent at Oak Park. Um, I have two kids that will not even be affected by this, but I'm fundamentally opposed to this plan. It's going to affect the fact that the school would close and then they would actually put central services into our building, our building that has just been enhanced for the children. Okay. So now, is, why is closing a school a bad thing? So when you look at the three schools, they are what would be termed community schools, neighborhood schools. They serve smaller populations than some of our larger schools to the south, like Lake Elmo Elementary, but they are key you know, cornerstones of their communities. Oak Park is a walkable school district, which is really important, especially for our low socioeconomic students that don't have as many transportation um, opportunities. And then in Withrow and Marine, it's it's their central building. It's their yeah, it's central. It's pretty rural out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, Bill. Yeah, no, I would just, you know, as far as, you know, the comment is what's wrong with closing the schools, you know, I think that's part of the conversation that we're trying to have is, you know, we're trying to come to the table and say, you know, what are the real issues that we're trying to solve here? And is closing schools really getting at those issues? I think the, the you know, we all have a, co I hope at least across the school district, we all have a common purpose to, you know, and I've talked to, you know, we've talked to many of the, the board members, the administration, we all have a common purpose to, you know, 
uh, reduce inequities across the district, to be able to you know, close achievement gaps and, and, and achieve excellence. We're just doubtful that this path is actually the way that achieves that. You know, many, of the, many of the benefits that they've highlighted from closing the schools, such as um, you know, right-sizing classes, um, being able to uh, uh, normalize student spend, many of these things, when you look into them, we're questioning whether they actually are going to get those benefits. And then when you look at the drawbacks, like Lindsay had talked about, particularly for those community schools, there's not a lot of other options for parents up there. So now all of a sudden you're talking about 40 plus minute bus rides one way wow. for kids to go mm -hmm. to elementary school, right? For, for, for what? Are we really going to get the types of benefits that, that, we're gonna, that, that we want to get for having that? What will parents decide to do when their kids are forced with that? And that, that's not even bus rides. You know, we, we, as we've been discussing with other parents, many parents rely on these community schools for before and after student, uh, student care. At my school, 25% of students rely on some form of before or after school care. So it's not just buses, it's, it's parents trying to take their kids to school and then get to work and then get back there. It, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a logistical challenge and it's going to be a, a discussion as far as is that another form of inequity that's being forced on parents. So if they close these schools and they're mm -hmm. successful, where do the kids then go for school? That's, that's the big thing. It's, <laughs> it's an unknown. That's why we're saying from a transparent plan, we have, we have no idea as far as, I mean, wow. I, I, I mean, Lynn, yeah, Erica? Well, I mean, the kids essentially will get dispersed to the other schools. And I think the claim is that there is there are empty classrooms, that there's space in these other schools. Um, but when, when you look at the numbers, it doesn't quite make sense. Just because there happens to be an empty classroom doesn't mean that five classrooms right beside of it aren't overcrowded or at capacity. So I think it's very short-sighted to say that we're going to just move kids into other schools and assume that we're not going to actually break our capacity at some point. And that's one of our concerns is the board is being asked to vote on February 11th for a plan that today, anybody in the district, and, and, I, and what we're trying to emphasize to, to all parents in the district, whether you're one of these three schools or another school, is if you were to call your board member up today and say, how does this impact my child? Where will my child be attending school as a result of disclosures? They would not be able to get an answer because, today from that. And so what we're saying is, let's not put a vote on something that we actually don't even know what the plan is. Like there, there, are, no, there are no boundaries. There are, I mean, we, we just right. don't have an idea. Yeah, we asked for, you know, what would the new boundaries be? And they said that they will not even think about how they're going to redraw them until after the vote, which oh, doesn't so really make sense. So this is one of sense. those, we got to um, pass the bill before we find what's find out what's in it right, type right. of yes. deal? So, somewhat. I, I think so. I think what, I mean. And, Using and, that as a metaphor. Yeah, and, and maybe, there is a, maybe there is a plan there, but what we're saying is from a, you know, our understanding is, you know, the public elected the board mm -hmm. to then put the administrators in their jobs. And what we're saying as far as if you look at that reporting chain in terms of community and parent partnership is we're saying, if you want us to be partners in this thing, we need to understand what your ultimate plan is. If you have one, you need to share it so we can all understand what's in the vote. If you don't have one, that may be a concern, and we need to talk about that, why we're even having a vote on something that we haven't really fully fleshed out the details. That makes sense. Uh, Dallas, can we uh, put the PowerPoint presentation back on the screen? This is uh, why bold is not the answer. And the board is being asked to vote on an incomplete plan, as you just mentioned. The process has bypassed parents and their community. So they haven't even really brought in parent involvement in this? That's no. correct. Yep. There is parent involvement that is starting to happen now. They are asking different people to come and meet with Pontrelli. Um, but that seems to be happening now that this announcement has been made. So, so for example, this announcement was made the week before Christmas when, when parents were going on holidays. There was going to be a public hearing in two weeks, essentially, and then a vote happening a week and a half after that. So in terms of being able to have any sort of community engagement in a positive way, both before the announcements, for looking to options, and then afterwards has a, having a rational discussion, we feel the process itself is not conducive. And then going back to the uh, slide, the plan will not realize the benefits advertised, and experts and experience suggest that this is not the right way. Can you discuss yep. those two? There's about 30 years of national education evidence that looks at school closures within a school district and the economies of scale, the cost savings are not realized. They actually typically find that the cost of closing these schools far exceeds the savings that they intended. Um, there wow. was a school in California, it's Pleasant, Pleasantville School? Yeah, and actually yeah. If, you, if you forward a couple slides forward um, to the, uh, has some of the examples. Um, very, this one right yep. here. Okay. So Pleasant Valley School in California, they stated that they would save $700,000 by closing schools and they actually lost 2.4 million when hundreds of parents pulled their students out of the district. 
Wow, now that is quite an impact. West Virginia, what happened there? West Virginia, they did 325 school closures, um, and what they found was that the central administration staff increased even though the student enrollment had decreased by about 41,000 students. So with decreased students, somehow they needed more administrators. And then the, further in that study, they uh, learned that transportation costs of students more than doubled. Wow. And that's, I mean, so that's one of the, th the messages we want to get out there is in terms of talking to the entire district is, listen, it's not just, we're not just complaining because it's our schools. We're looking at examples of where this has happened elsewhere, and we're actually just concerned for the entire district. We're going to make a lot, of, we're going to create a lot of turmoil for, for people in their schools, and that happens. Sometimes hard decisions need to be made, but are we actually sure that we're going to get any benefit out of there? This, so, you know, evidence elsewhere seems to suggest we should proceed with extreme caution and even more so that we should involve our communities and ask, you know, what will happen? Like, what, so w let's say we do this, will a lot of parents from Marine, from Withrow, from Oak Park decide, you know what, I'm not putting my kid on a bus for 40 minutes. I'm going to try and go elsewhere. And so that's something the district needs to wrestle with, I think, a what little bit more. What has the feedback from other parents within those three schools? We have always. a survey. Um, we don't have our official results yet, but the results we have so far say that 60% of people surveyed will pull their children out of the district wow. and that 30% of people would actually move out of the district. Now that is quite an impact. Yeah, I think the effect on capture rates as a whole, um, I think they're, they, they're thinking that it will actually improve it in some way, um, but I think it's actually going to really decrease our capture rate. Um, you know, we see people that are, and I think a lot of the things they've based on where they're going to see the growth. They're going to see growth in the lower areas of Washington County near Woodbury. Um, and they're saying that there, there's no way that there will be any growth in the north end or in se the central section of Stillwater. And that's, I think, extremely short-sighted, and I really hesitate to believe a lot of the sources where they're getting this information. And, that, and it's a great point that's brought up because they may not I mean, so for instance, two years ago, they projected what Marine and Withrow Elementary Schools uh, enrollment was going to be. Right now, Marine is 25% over what was projected just two years ago, right? So we're going on these... So their projections were just flat out wrong. Just flat out wrong. And, and it's not that the smart people aren't working on it, but projections are notoriously hard to get right, right? I mean, so, so let's be realistic and look, okay, well, maybe we can't predict the future, and maybe we do have a school district that's actually extremely long. It's a, it's a geographical shape that maybe cutting out elementary school presence in the whole northern half of our school district might be a short-sighted thing if, if, if our predictions are wrong. And, we, and we've been wrong in the past on these, predict on these projections. Let's take a look at the next slide here. There are currently no plan specifics that have been shared with the community. Some of this we've already covered here. Uh, community impact assessment, sources and uses of savings, school boundaries, transportation plan, enhanced programming plan. Can you describe that and the fact-based evidence for success? Yeah, so a little bit on the, on the enhanced programming plan. So one of the big emphasis of this, and, and again, going back to the, the, the discussion around equity, and, and we, how we all want equitable outcomes and to achieve you know, better academic outcomes mm -hmm. as well. One of the discussions is by closing these schools, we'll be able to free up some additional resources for an, what they're calling enhanced programming, or some program that we can do um, in, in the remaining schools as we consolidate the students. What we're not seeing is a whole lot of details around how that funding will go into the, that enhanced programming, what the enhanced programming looks like, and giving, you know, parents a chance to say, okay, I'm now giving up this sort of community presence with my school. Boy, this enhanced programming really makes me feel better about that because my kids are having such a better experience. Like, let's get it out there so parents can actually see, man, I'm, I, I, I really buy into this or I don't buy into this. But right mm -hmm. now, you just have no idea. Like, what is the plan with this? And you know, one of the things they're trying to really tout is equitability. And to me, um, some of the things, and they've, they haven't given us any information about how they would truly get equitable, but I think one of the key decisions that they've already put out there is that they would put the GATE program in the junior high and that they would put the autism program in Rutherford. By doing that, that doesn't make it equitable. You just put it in another single location. You didn't put that program in each school. So I really want to um, understand what they mean by equity. And, and that's actually a good segue into our, our next slide. We have a couple points All on, right. on right, that Let's one. take a look at the next yeah. slide here. <laughs> Yeah. The process has alienated parents or, and the oh, community. Actually, I meant this. <laughs> well, let's talk about this sure. one first. Here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're already here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you have the students, parents, and citizens of ISD 834 to the board members, to the superintendent. 
best practices for school consolidation discussions were not followed. What, what are some of the best practices that you've researched in, in dealing with this? Well, specifically that when you are going to go through s school closures or consolidation, that you start with the students and the parents and the community members. This decision needs to, s with the graph, it needs to start up top, it goes to the board members and then the superintendent. The board members, they serve the students th and the community. They In don't, theory. Right. They don't serve the administration and they don't serve the superintendent. So us specifically, we have 1,600 parents that have stated their opposition to this. Mm -hmm. 1,600 parents versus how many people are, are on the school administrative team or versus one superintendent, yeah. it doesn't seem like they're taking into consideration what the community actually wants and feels is right for their children. Yeah. And an accelerated timeline prevents adequate public involvement. Yeah. Well, and for example... And is that by design? It is. And part of it is that we don't want to, you know, I, I think part of the, the healthy discussion we're trying to have is we don't want to necessarily impute motives onto other people. Mm -hmm. we're, we're basically saying it makes us feel like when, when a district or, or a board says, we want parents to be partners in their kids' education, mm -hmm. that if partnership looks like an announcement before Christmas that mm -hmm. gives you about four weeks to get some sort of you know, response to a, a plan that you can't even understand, that's, n that's not partnership, right? And so uh, we don't want to necessarily impute motives. We're just saying, this is how we feel. Mm -hmm. and, and the process can be a lot better. I mean, there, I mean, in terms of following the process, sometimes hard decisions have to be made, but let's create a process mm -hmm. that actually works for everybody so that when we get to the end of that hard decision, at least we're all able to look at, at, at all the sides of the issue. Essentially, we just we want to be at the table. We want to be part of the conversation. There's going to be a meeting at Marine this week, okay. and Superintendent Pontrelli released a statement saying she will not come to the meeting and be part of it if the parents get to speak. Oh, now, really? Now, this seems fundamentally wrong. We do not get to stand up at this meeting and ask questions and give statements and wow. tell our opinions. If we want her to come, there's no Public so in other words, we're going to have it our way. We're not going to have it any other way. That's kind of the feedback <laughs> we're getting from the district. Yes. Yes. And then you know, on your slide here, state legislature, state legislators, and city leaders have publicly opposed the process, and important information has been misrepresented or not disclosed. Can we talk mm -hmm. about that briefly here? Yeah. So I mean, so obviously, with uh, uh, on the city on the city side, you know, this impacts residents of, of northern communities such as you know Hugo and Stillwater, and you know Marine's going to be having the meeting, and and a number of those uh, city councils have drafted you know resolutions, um, you know, with strong language about the process that's been deployed by the district, saying that, you know, um, they see no reason why this process has been followed, why the communities wow. haven't been consulted. And, you know, if for a city council to draft a letter like this to the, to the board and say, you know, your process is broken, you need to fix it, I think they're sending a strong message that, you know, again, communities and parents are critical to their kid, our kids' education. Right? And to circumnavigate that, to, to take them out of the equation, it's just not a healthy thing. Okay, and then we have your slide. Does this really work? Is this the slide you guys were mm -hmm. referring to? All right, we're finally on the <laughs> yes. right one now. So uh, what am I looking at? So things that we want to take into consideration that haven't been taken into consideration, um, we are moving pre-K into all of the elementary schools in the district. When you have your preschool students in your elementary school, they have an 87% capture rate. So even though we're moving the sixth graders out, we're still going to be filling their shoes with more children. Mm -hmm. So what is the motivation then to close these schools? Because when you have school closure, you're creating fewer but larger schools. Yeah. Larger schools are historically associated with significant student negative impact. And I know I live in District 622, and for years they were always talking about the size of the classroom. Yeah. Classroom size. Oh, classroom sizes are increasing. That's mm -hmm. a bad thing. Classroom sizes are increasing. That's a really bad thing. We need yeah. to cut classroom mm -hmm. size. And yet this is just doing the opposite for the Stillwater School District of creating larger classroom sizes? Well, no, I, I don't think that I means. I, I think we're, we're concerned that it may. I think if, okay. we, if we look at inequities, as far as what the, what the district is publicly saying they'd like to do, Right, which are things that we'd all like to do is basically we want to make spending so that it's not so inequitable between students. That's one of the things they publicly said they want to do, which is which is great. We also want to reduce class sizes where in areas where they've gotten too too large. Now, there's two problems that we're seeing with those statements, and 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 this goes to a little bit of let's have a fact-based discussion. Is on that first part on spending per student, 
Um, the gap between the various schools, number one, is, is not that large, right? So Withrow mm -hmm. Elementary School, for example, is right about right around the average, right? A a initially, it was being stated that there are $1,600 over the average, and per student, they'd have to cut hundreds of thousand dollars over the budget. Well, if you actually look at from an equity-based spending, they're about $40,000 over the budget. And for a rural school with higher transportation costs and just the cost of serving a smaller community, that might be a, an okay trade-off to, to, to serve that community. Is it worth closing a school, let's say, for $40,000 of an equitable spend? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But, but the way the discussion is happening is that that's being portrayed as, you know, these, these, these schools are spending so much more than other schools. And on the class sizes, that's the other thing where a lot of parents in these other schools that aren't being closed are promised, once we do this, you'll have smaller class sizes. But when you look at what the but the district's own data is from the adjusted class sizes, uh, these three schools do not have um, significantly out of line class sizes. In fact, so my, my son's kindergarten class, there are I think six or seven schools with higher class sizes than his kindergarten uh, uh, class. Right. Marine, which is you know constantly said as having just small class sizes, they have the largest fourth grade class in the, in the whole entire district, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a number of statements being made that we can consolidate these schools and cut cl cl class sizes, but we're already looking at, at schools that are, all, I mean, they're, they're not that much different in class sizes. So we're concerned that the inequities they're trying to solve, that by closing the schools, they're actually not going to solve those inequities. And even if they were to get closer, they're basically transferring inequities onto then these communities with longer transportation times, no access to, you know, to uh, community care, and really, most importantly and fundamentally, no parent choice. So if you look at a map for the mm -hmm. top 50% of the, of the geography now, if you're living in Withrow or Marine or in that area, you have you don't have any access to any other sort of alternative mm -hmm. schools, right? As a matter of fact, speaking of map, let me just see if I can pull one up. So keep sure. talking, keep yeah. telling us. <laughs> yeah, sure. So so when you're when you have a, a school in the in the south or the central, you have a, other access to some other school districts that are open to you. You have charter schools, other pri you know if you want to go to the private school private schools that are closer. Now if you're up in the north, access to those types of options is are extremely limited. limited. Right. And that's one of the reasons, and, and so when people made the decision, many of us, so inclu including myself and my family, we made the decision to move up to be close to Withrow, not because we wanted a whole other other options, but we made the choice to move up there because mm -hmm. that was the option we wanted to pursue. A number of families did that because that's, you know, we have schools that serve those mm -hmm. communities. And so to do this, you've basically backed off of a commitment the district has had for a long time to have at least a, a parent choice as far as how they're going to educate their children. We also lose parent choice in the type of school. When If this goes through and they close the three schools, there will be no traditional closed school programs left north of 36. And me specifically, we wow. were zoned for Stonebridge but felt that our children would succeed in a closed traditional environment. So we alternatively enroll into Withrow and there will be no closed traditional schools left. That, that's in fact one of the reasons why I, you know, we were zoned to be within the Oak Park District when we moved into town and I was like, that's perfectly fine. It's more of a traditional school. That's that's the choice that I make. Um, and I think it, it was a perfect choice. Um, you know, I think another thing to mention about all three of these schools is they're all high performing schools. Withrow mm -hmm. and Marine are the highest, but Oak Park is, uh, I think it was a four as well. Mm -hmm. um, they were a five. Five um, star blue ribbon schools. Yeah. So oh, really? So, yeah. Yeah. so, yeah, these, so these they're taking the of, the, of all the schools, they're taking some of the best yeah. ones. Yeah. Right, these yeah. are not poor closure. performing schools. The, these, that's are the, correct. these are the top half of the district, at least, and the three of them are top in the state. I think Marine is number five in the state from yeah. academic achievement. That's, that's, that's one thing that's really concerned us is we've actually looked to see in other, any other school consolidation setting, can we find any example across the country of schools that have closed their top performing schools when they're looking to consolidate? We can find a lot of examples like through No Child Left Behind and some of these others where they've closed and consolidated very poor performing schools or out of compliance schools. But we have yet to see any examples where a school has closed their best schools, number one, mm -hmm. we can't even find any, and even if we could, did, did that actually increase student achievement? Did that make the school district better? And so to us it feels like a very big experiment. There is nothing that suggests, at least that we can find, that says this will accomplish the schools because literally there is no precedent for this. And all the literature goes to state that you have the lower academic performance, you have lower col college admission rates, you have higher incidences of bullying, behavioral mm -hmm. problems when you close schools and you, there's this magical number floating around the literature that says the, a school size should be 300 to 400 students. Once you get above 400 students for an elementary school, this is when you get the low academic performance and the behavioral problems. All of the schools that are to remain open will be largely over 400 students.
So this doesn't sound like it's really solving anything. Well, and, and that's why we want, what we're asking, maybe our call to action is for parents who are seeing this, whether you're part of the affected schools or not, is call your board member, call the administration, and ask them, like, show me how this is impacting my child. Tell me how this is going to solve the problem and, and ask them to give you the specifics. And if they can't, or if, you know, based on the things that we're talking about today, if the answers don't seem to quite add up, ask them why we're pursuing this February 11th, you know, vote. Why can't we take some more time as a community to discuss it? And that's our call to action. Get, get on the phone with your board members and your legislators. And let's take a quick look here at um, the, the uh, computer here. It's kind of hard to see because I haven't been able to get a big map, but let's take just a quick look at the district map. So this area right here shows the Withrow School District, you know, uh, in kind of the beige color. And then we're also dealing with Marine, which is the orangish color. And then Oak Park Heights is... It's right in the center to the right. This area right in um, here or no, here? No, it's the pale blue. I, th I think it's pale blue. I okay, so right in here in the pale blue. Yeah, that makes sense. So these three elementary schools are slated for closure if the district gets their way. But yes, your transportation, when you're coming up in this district, you know, in, th in this geographical area up here, that is a heck of a distance. Mm -hmm. So now you mentioned, you mentioned meetings here. We've got just about a minute left. What can parents do in order to get involved? Where are these meetings? Uh, when are they being held? Uh, can you let us know? There are public hearings. Each school gets a day. So we have January 26th, 27th, and 28th, and they are at Oakland Junior High. At 5 p.m.? Yes. Yeah, we have mm -hmm. 5 p.m. Okay, all, all of them are at Oakland? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so it's our opportunity as community members to stand up and address the board and you know, tell them if you're against it, if you're for it, what you want to see, what you don't want to see, and then the vote will be on February 11th. Okay, February 11th yeah. vote. <coughs> Not a lot of time. Yes, and there's not a lot of time, and there's not a lot of meetings left, right? So we have those three public hearing things. So I think the most effective thing is if you're a parent, if you're a citizen in the community, if you're a taxpayer in the district that, you know, based on some of the history as far as v maybe voting on a bond or a levy when you're under expectation schools were going to close, call your board member, call the administration. Tell Bill, them Eric, Bill, Lindsay, thank you so much thank for you. coming out today. And we'll just please be sure to keep us informed so we can continue to uh, let the audience know, uh, our viewership know what's going on. And these are the issues that we do like to do discuss here on North Star Oasis. Uh, we gave you the update on South Washington County Schools. Now we gave you the update on the Stillwater Public Schools and we'll continue to update as things go on. So that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. We will see you next week.